Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the types of data practice questions. So if you need any extra help on different types of data, if you go to corpmaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video numbers 342 and 343, there's video tutorials there, I believe, on continuous and discrete data, as well as quantitative and qualitative data. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions. So let's get started. So question number one, question number one says a car salesman records information about the cars he is selling. And here's a list of words and we've got qualitative, continuous and discrete. And our first question says, use a word from the list to complete each sentence. So the number of doors is something data. So qualitative data, that's more like qualities, like colors and things like that. Continuous, that's the values that are given any particular value on a given scale. So for instance, uh, time taken or the length of something or something like that. Discrete data, that's data that can only take certain values. And in terms of the number of doors, it's going to be one door, two doors, three doors, and so on. So that's gonna be our answer. So the number of doors is discrete data, discrete data. Okay, part B. Part B says the age of the car is something data. Now actually this question, I haven't gonna actually accept two different answers here because the age of the car strictly speaking would be continuous because it could be 4.7525 and so on years. Um, so it could be continuous data. So it could be continuous if you are given the, the age as in, in sort of an exact value. Um, or it also could be given as discrete data. If you said that someone's age, it could be given as like one year old, two year old, three year old and so on. It depends how the data is given. So I'm gonna accept either continuous data or discrete data given this question so it could be continuous in terms of the age of the car could be given as a decimal number or it could be discrete I tend to give my age as you know 25 years old or you know the age of the car is 52 years old that's an old car and so on and um, so it could be given you know quite often it would be given as discrete data but it could be continuous as well the age is probably strictly speaking continuous in terms of it, it would have an exact amount to you know the exact age it would have a decimal number and so on and um, but we would often give it as discrete data Okay, and part C, part C says the color of the car is something data. Well, the color of the car would be qualitative data because it's one of the qualities, qualitative data, qualitative data, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number two. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number two. So question number two says a shop owner records information about his customers. Perhaps he's done a survey. Put across in each box to indicate whether the following is either qualitative or quantitative data. So the distance traveled to get to the shop, well, that's going to be a quantity. It's going to be so many miles or so many kilometers. So that's quantitative data. And we've been asked to put a cross, so that's the cross in that box. Next, the method of transport, well, that's going to be, you know, by foot or by car or by bus and so on. So that's going to be qualitative. It's non-numerical. It's, it's it's uh, qualitative data and part C the average amount of money spent well, again that's going to be numerical so that's going to be a quantitative data so the answers are quantitative qualitative and quantitative okay let's have a look at our next question question number three so question number three says a car repair garage records information about the cars it repairs and we're to put across in each box to say whether it's discrete or continuous data. So the length of the car, that's going to be continuous because obviously it's any value on a given scale. So it's going to be continuous data. The amount of time taken to repair each car, well, that's going to be continuous. It's going to be, you know, for instance, 4.27 hours and so on. So it's a continuous data. Next, the number of seats. Well, that's going to be a certain number of seats. So that's going to be discrete data. So it's, you know, one seat, two seats, three seats and so on. The number of gears. Again, that's discrete data. It can only take certain values. Next, the number of miles per gallon. So that's going to be, for instance, 47.725 and so on miles per gallon. So that's going to be continuous. It can take any value on a given scale. And that's it. OK, let's have a look at our next question. Question number four. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number four. So question number four says, there's 40 sheep on a farm, and we're to use the best word from the list to complete each sentence below. And we've got three choices, qualitative, discrete, and continuous. The colors of the sheep are, well, it's qualitative data. It's, it's qualities, they're words, the qualities of the sheep, qualitative data. And the weights of the sheep would be continuous data because they could be any weight on a given scale. You know, for instance, they could be, you know, 7.227 kilograms or so on, or however you want to measure the weights of a sheep. Okay, next, so that's question four, so qualitative and continuous. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number five. So question number five says, is eye color discrete or continuous data? So eye color, it can take certain values, so that's going to be discrete data. So we've been asked to tick a box, so let's tick discrete data, and let's give our answer. And I've just written down that eye colors can only take certain values, e.g. blue, green, brown, etc. So that's why it would be discrete data. 
Okay, next, question number six. Question number six says, is height discrete or continuous data? So someone's height, well, that's measured on a scale, and you could give it as, for instance, you know, 1.82711 so meters. So it's continuous. It can take any value on a given scale. It says tick a box, so let's tick continuous, and let's explain our answer. I've written down that height can take any value on a scale, so therefore it's continuous. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number seven. So question number seven says, is time taken to complete a marathon discrete or continuous data? Well, again, time can be given as, you know, for instance, you can give it in seconds, tenths of seconds, hundreds of seconds, and so on. So it's continuous data. It can take any value on a given scale. And let's explain that. And that's it. So just written down that time can take any value on a scale, so it's continuous. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number eight. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number eight. So question number eight says, is currency discrete or continuous data? Tick a box. So currency can only take certain values because obviously you've got your certain denomination of coins. You've got your 1p, 2p, 5p, and so on. Or if you're in another country, you might have like a, a 1 cent, 2 cents, 5 cents, and so on. So currency is discrete data. can only take certain values. So I'm going to take discrete data. So so the currency is discrete data. And let's give her a reason for her answer. And I've just written down that currency can only take certain values, so therefore it's discrete data. Um, just to mention here that, um, for instance, whenever you mention is money discrete or continuous, often you would get a student mentioning, for instance, if you consider a filling station, that diesel might be 155.9 pence per liter and so on. And that's the price, and it might be the value of something. The value of something might be continuous. But in terms of currency, currency would definitely be discrete. You can only take certain values. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number nine. So question number nine, we've got this boy and he says, I am 13 years old. And Robert says he's 13 years old. So Robert is 13 years old. And Alan says that Robert's response is continuous data. And Hannah says that Robert's response is discrete data. Who do you agree with and explain your answer? Now, actually, in this question, whenever you say your age, quite often you would give your age as, you know, I'm 51 or I'm 22 or I'm 13 and so on. So you would generally give it as a whole number of years. Um, you know, if someone asked me my age and I said, oh, I'm 24.772177 and so on, then th I might get a few strange looks. So whenever you give your age, you typically give it as discrete data. You give it as a whole number of years. Um, just for ease sake, for instance, you know, you would just say you're 13 until you turn 14 on your 14th birthday and so on. Unless Alan's really, really lucky, and this is exactly the moment that Robert is 13 years old, and it's his 13th birthday, and this was the exact moment that he was born 13 years ago, and that that is actually continuous data, um, I would say that it's much more likely that Hannah's correct. So let's explain that. And that's it. So I've just said it's much more likely that Hannah's correct and that Robert has given his age as a discrete as discrete data. Uh, so unless, uh, for instance, that Robert was born exactly uh, 13 years ago, you know, that particular second, even as he's saying the sentence, he's probably going to be wrong. It's going to change as he's even saying it. Um, so I would say that Hannah's probably correct. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the types of data practice questions. I hope you found this video useful. If you need any extra help on discrete data or continuous data, qualitative data or quantitative data, if you would Corbmath.com forward slash contents and scroll down to videos 342 and 343. There's dedicated video tutorials there on types of data. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But again, I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.